Ladies and gentlemen, director Colin Trevorov, uh, Emily Carmichael, screenwriter, did I say it wrong? <laughs> screenwriter, Emily Carmichael, Bryce Dallas Howard, Dewanda, Dewanda Wise, and, and somebody named, and someone named Jeff Goldblum. Jeff Goldblum. I want to. I want to start with a, a apology to Colin Trevaro. How For, long have we known each other? At this it, point? Honest to God, oh I'm God. I'm mortified right Wait, now. Wait, but I say Trevaro. Yeah. Right, yeah, Trevaro. It's like tomorrow. I, Trevaro. Okay. I I have no words. I just want to. I get nervous still to this day. Like I like in my head will be like tomorrow, 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 Trevaro. <laughs> Trevaro, like tomorrow. Yeah. 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 So I, don't worry. It's, I, yeah. Thank you, Bryce. Yeah. I want to start with the fact that we are live in 71 IMAX theaters around North America right now. Everywhere from Montreal to California, there's a ton of people watching you guys. It, how, is it cool to be like in front of all these people at once? Well, it's cool to be in New York. <laughs> guys, I'm from New York. This is my childhood movie theater. I came to this movie theater so many times. I protested in front of this movie theater when they wouldn't let us in to see a matinee because we were high school students and we were supposed to be in school. It was very meaningful to be here. <laughs> so I love learning about the behind the scenes of the making of movies. And I think everyone in this audience, if you're coming to you know, Jurassic World Dominion opening night, you're a fan. And I'm curious for, for the people out there, for each of you, what do you think would surprise people to learn about the actual making of the movie? I still get the question about what it's like to work with a tennis ball, and I'm proud to report that there was very little tennis ball acting. Uh, so I, I just think the level of uh, practical effects in this film was absolutely astonishing. As a blockbuster newbie, it's very helpful. Uh, so I'm sure I'll be obnoxious my next time around, like, oh, it's not here. <laughs> I don't where, have are a scene yeah, where are the 27 animatronics? Where are the 27 Where are all the puppeteers? <laughs> <laughs> Amateur hour. Yeah, so I think, uh, you know, I, I cannot emphasize that enough because it's incredible and it takes a, a lot of craftsmanship and a whole lot of people to make that happen. Uh, anyone else? Let's see. Um, you know, I, I'm thinking of what you might really be interested in. You've seen, yeah, because these days, you know, you see all manner of, you know, uh, what it was like, and you meet John Nolan, the creature shop uh, creator of all the things. But we, we did, we've talked about this before. Um, Colin, our wonderful director, had us all in a hotel, um, partly, you know, because of COVID, of course, but we, we rehearsed. He was very collaborative, as we've uh, t talked about, but the way we all work together, I, maybe, maybe somebody here or watching would be interested in how we kind of opened things up uh, from the beautiful script that you guys wrote and actually used our weekends to go through the material that was going to be shot the next week and really went, you know, you'd be, I, we didn't take any photo, pictures or videos of what we did, but those rehearsals. I did. I took a lot I of, did. I have I a did lot too. of behind the scenes. I did too. <laughs> like a creep. I have so many photos of you, Jeff. Really? It's fine. Wow. Just wait till next week. Yeah. I, I did too. I have like little I, uh, secret videos. <laughs> okay, secret videos exist. Uh, I just the idea of you know something that reshaped people's lives uh, for thirty years. That these are these are powerful words and these characters, these icons that that uh, Laura, Sam, and Jeff played. Uh, they mean so much to us. They, they were powerful uh, and they were heroes and uh, inspired so many kids to become scientists and, and paleontologists. And uh, to me, as, as we thought about everything we were going to do, as we tried to figure out how we were going to make sure these, these characters changed uh, and were honored the way our, our, our Bryce and Chris were, were going to relate to them, what they would know about them, our new characters, Edwanda Wise, Mama Duache, Everybody coming together to be able to to show the same level of reverence and respect, and then just shake it up and put them on a real adventure and send them into actual danger. We're here in an IMAX theater. I love IMAX. What are you most excited, Colin, for audiences to see in IMAX tonight? 
Uh, well, we have some pretty massive dinosaurs in this movie, but we, we also have a, a sequence uh, racing through the streets of Malta uh, that we shot uh, over a very long period of time with actual motorbikes uh, and an actual vehicle that, that these two were driving. Uh, and it's, it's, it's a really exhilarating scene. I've seen it in IMAX, uh, and so it's, it's so completely immersive. Also, the sound in this theater, we have an animal that uh, pretty much just uh, communicates with echolocation, and so you hear it uh, in every single speaker except the one that it's coming from, which is really disorienting. Uh, I'm so curious for the two of you, what would have happened if like Jeff had said, no, I don't want to do this? Uh, we wouldn't do it. <laughs> but, but, I wouldn't, I mean. But, but, if, I mean what would have happened with have the, like with, a, a contingency plan to like strong harm him. I mean, what? <laughs> well, no, if the original cast had said, you know, I don't know if we want to come back, what, what would have oh, happened? Oh, like, no in the beginning. did you know oh. that they were on board? That, I mean, because we knew B.D. Wong was obviously in the first Jurassic World, which, which was incredibly validating since he was in Jurassic Park. And then in Fallen Kingdom, Jeff joined, which was like, oh, Jeff Goldblum is now involved. And then for Dominion with, with Laura Dern and Sam Neill, when did you know that Laura and Sam specifically were, were on board? I feel like everyone said yes in principle right away, and they were excited right away, but there was then that, that conversation uh, about, well, where have you been, and, and what have, how, how do you see this new world that's been created? What's your perspective? And, and I think that actors are authorities on their characters. I think they know more about who they are than I can ever know, because they think about their character all day, every day. Uh, and you know, my brain has to be in a lot of different places, so if I have a question about what Ian Malcolm would think, I'll ask Jeff Goldblum. Uh, the, um, <laughs> the uh, um, well, in, well, first of all, the premise of the question, in what crazy alternate universe would I have ever said no, but it doesn't exist, I don't care how many multi-verses there are, there's n none, none of them have me saying no, but had I for some reason been unable to do it, I'm sure it would have been like that TV series Bewitched. Without any explanation, they would have replaced me in this uh, movie with possibly John Turturro, <laughs> possibly Kevin Klein. I don't know. I'm sure the list is um, long and uh, uh, fruitful, and we nah, might all have been better off. there's one Dr. Ian Malcolm. There is one, and it's you, sir. Oh, get out of there. <laughs> Uh, Bryce, I'm curious. In the last few years, you've been doing some directing. You've directed The Mandalorian. And I believe Book of Boba Fett. Thank you, thank you. And I'm curious how that's changed you as an actor. Like when you step foot on a set like this, is it, what's going through your brain in terms of, you know what I mean? Yeah, no, absolutely. I, I think that, I mean, what's so wonderful about getting to be an actor who's interested in directing or studying directing is that you get to see a lot of other directors work. And that's something that my dad, he started off as an actor doing Andy Griffith show and Happy Days and films like The Shootist and, and American Graffiti. And then when he started directing, he stopped acting and he said that's the thing that he misses the most, getting to see how different directors solve problems, because that's really what directors are. They're, they're, they're constant problem, they're visionaries and then they're problem solvers. And so just in the last, I've been, I've been getting to work um, on, on Mandalorian since 2018 and, and having Jon Favreau as my mentor and Dave Filoni as my Star Wars mentor has been, and I know they're the incredible, incredible uh, artists and uh, and visionaries, and so learning from them, and then going to make a movie like Dominion. I mean, I was I was a little annoying because I was like, I just want to follow you around, and I just want to see everything. I want to see the visual effects you're using. I want to see how you do it because it's very rare to gain access like that to a process like this. And uh, I one of the reasons why I wanted to, I actually shadowed my dad when he when he directed a movie called Solo, and I remember us talking about it when that all happened. Um, it, it was an opportunity for me, now that I was a professional actor, to, to watch my dad be a director and to understand what he was doing. So the more you learn, the more you understand, but the more you're enlightened by each filmmaker that you get to encounter. And so that's why I hope, I hope, to, I hope to get to continue to direct, but I also hope to get to continue to act, because it's the best way to learn. And one thing that I should just say is, um, 
I, a moment that I really remember, I was doing a movie called Pete's Dragon, and a uh, wonderful filmmaker, Dave Lowry, directed that. And uh, he's, he's young, he's the same age as, as me, and um, I mean, I'm 41, but like he, when we were making it, he was in his mid-30s. And, um, and Robert Redford was on set, and Robert Redford is one of the most experienced, um, multifaceted, uh, talented people in, in the history of our industry. And he was asking Dave so many questions. And he was, he was so curious about the technology. And I was like, if Robert Redford is, is using acting as an opportunity to learn more about filmmaking, then that's how every director should be operating, as far as I'm concerned. Jumping into some fan questions that we have here. Uh, Alexander Diaz is asking, after 30 years of this franchise existing, would you change anything? I, don't ask me. I I can't watch any of the movies. Change everything all the time. There's <laughs> if, if any of you have, have ever directed anything, it's very very hard to to be truly satisfied with your own work. But you're constantly trying to do something that feels absolutely the most honorable to the source material, and yet truly new and different and fresh and bold all at the same time. Uh, so I'd, I'd throw that to the rest of you. Oh, I just I'm just I can't wait to see more. Um, I think it would be cool to see Jurassic movies in like different parts of the world, to have like the swamp crawl Jurassic movie or like the spelunking disaster Jurassic movie or maybe like the corporate boardroom. No, that would be a bad one. Forget I said that one. Um, but like cool other locations, I think that would be really thrilling. Uh, because we have so many fan questions, if you don't mind, let's move on to the next one. So Corey wants to know, if Jurassic Park really existed, would you go? Nobody here. Nobody on this panel. Not one person on this panel would go. I would go. I would go. Oh, Emily. And we have a taker. She doesn't learn. <laughs> Somebody has to not learn in order for the story to go on. Jeff, would you go? Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so that I could uh, assert some leverage on the decision makers and possibly change their minds for the better. Thank you. Uh, Trish wants to know, what was your favorite moment in a Jurassic movie that you did not star in? Kitchen scene in the first Jurassic Park, you know. The green jello leading into the kitchen, that whole sequence, unreal. Well, I didn't start in any moment, so this is an easy question for me. Um, but the moment when Bryce and Dewanda's character meet in our movie remains one of my favorite sequences. <laughs> yeah, we meet in a bathroom, spoiler. <laughs> in a bathroom. In the ladies' room. In a ladies' room. Uh, well, off the top of my head, in um, wasn't it the last... Uh, I was in it, but I mean, wasn't it in, in <laughs> Fallen Kingdom, in Fallen Kingdom, where, or was it in World, the first world, where the two brothers, where the brothers have been, get, out, get away from me, you little, little punk, and then at some point during the crisis, he's like, you can count on me, and the brothers kind of unite, we have two kids, two brothers, and I thought that was, ooh, hoo, hoo, sweet, you know, I really Jurassic did. World, that was That's Jurassic, Jurassic World. That's Jurassic World, yes, yeah. yes, I love that, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Brian has a question for everyone. Um, if you could pick one dinosaur, or if you could pick any dinosaur to have as a pet, uh, which dinosaur would you choose and why? I mean, it's, I'd be stupid. I'd go Velociraptor. I'm sorry. Oh. <laughs> you can't stop me. You're consistent. Yeah, I you just, know? <laughs> you're like, bring that park back. Yeah, she yeah. doesn't learn. Put me in with They're the so Velociraptor beautiful. cage. They're so beautiful. Well, uh, we're asked this, believe it or not, uh, all, all, you know, spare, no. What dinosaur? What dinosaur? Yes. <laughs> what dinosaur? I know. We're asked this often. Uh, I've given a different answer every time. And now off the top of my Same. head, thinking clearly, I think it would be a compi. I think if I put that compi on a leash and walked down the street with it, it would be pretty protective. I said <laughs> compies <laughs> earlier today when someone asked me that question. And then I quickly realized that the other day I saw two rats within five minutes of each other and compies is a lie. <laughs> because compies are the rats of the franchise, in my opinion. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Sparrow wants to know, what was the most challenging part about playing this role, which is clearly for the actors? Which is clearly what? For the actors. Oh, for the yeah. actors. I was just working on not pulling a hamstring to be really, you know, it's, it's one thing to train for a role and another thing 
to do uh, something, a sequence repeatedly over and over and over again with that level of adrenaline and, you know, it's sprinting, you know, it's not, it's not cross country, it's like sprinting every time. Um, so yeah, just staying as well uh, and stretched as possible. It's probably the most challenging. It's the same for me. Yeah, for sure. You just because the second there's an injury, game over. And so it's your job to be able to show up on set and deliver again and again and again, and whatever it takes to get there um, is is definitely a huge focus for us. So yeah, taking taking some hits. My theory is that if it heals within a week ish, it's fine. <laughs> I would say, you know, one answer off the top of my head is, you know, in, in many different ways, not to let the opportunity down, you know, uh, you know and, and somehow come up to an optimal uh, discharging of the obligation. And so that's kind of challenging in many different ways. But having heard you say that, oh, yes, there was a, uh, you remember that day, and you see, you'll see it in the movie where I had to sprint like uh, Usain Bolt uh, away from a dinosaur. And uh, as you know, I have not disclosed this yet to anyone publicly, and I won't tell them the whole story, but you know, there was running, there was sprinting involved, and yes, I was also concerned. I didn't want to, because I, I have also done pulled a hammy here and there on other occasions. I didn't want that to happen. You helped me on that night, and then in the editing. You helped uh, him some more. You helped me some more, very gracefully. Uh, <laughs> Jeff, uh, Jeff is very musical, and, and, very and, musical. and jazz kind of flows He's got through his body. Run. He's got a jazz run. run. A jazz he has run. this run yeah, where you can run. almost see him like <laughs> counting off as he's yeah, running. Keeping time. Uh, keeping yeah. time in the run. And so there oh, was a couple right. like, well, we don't, need the, we don't need to keep time. We don't need the, the that's jazz. That's right. Move. Try that again, Jeff. Yeah. But this time, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Um, this is going to be the last question for you guys. Um, this is from Gabriel. Uh, how did you feel filming the last scene knowing that this is the end of the trilogy? No, I just, it was, yeah. the, most, it was the most emotional day of filming that I've ever experienced. Yeah, it was the very last thing, uh, the very last thing we did have, had everyone in it. And at the, at the end of the film, uh, everyone is packed into this tiny helicopter. And the, when I looked in at all of you, you were to my right because you're flying the helicopter. And then there, it looked like E.T.'s closet with all of these faces of all these people who I loved and who I had made this film with. Uh, and they were all looking back at me and, and we were all feeling the same thing. And it was, it was really the last shot that we did was this whole group together. And it's very rare that you wrap all the actors on a movie on the same night, especially a cast as large as this one uh, and we've been through a lot and so it was it was it was it was very meaningful it was very special yeah for me it was it was meaningful too but I gotta tell you the truth the truthful answer is like oftentimes the last you know because you've had last things here and there after a big you know investment of some kind I, I'm always kind of and probably, as I remember on this occasion, too, kind of don't get too caught up with the goodbye fellow actors. Hasn't this been fun? There's still something in that shot, whatever it was, that how do I make this good? How do I not make it bad? You know, how do I? I don't want to do it. And then, oh, what could I have done differently? The last shot, you know. So I'm kind of focused thinking, you know, that's kind of what happens. And then when it, when it ends... You know, there's goodbye, everybody, and all that. But that takes a while sometimes for me to process. It's not all at once, oh, 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 oh it's the end. We do, you know, a kind of, uh, you know, expulsion of something or a feeling of uh, take my girdle off or, uh, you know, uh, that kind of takes a little processing. I'm still kind of processing it, you know. I think that's really true. It's, it's I mean, I remember when we, I was very emotional that night for sure. And I don't know if you remember, because we flew back together, I basically cried the entire <laughs> flight. It was real sad. B.D. Wong was like, our leading lady is not okay. <laughs> but um, even, even the last few days, because it's something, getting to do press is something that we all get to look forward to and realizing that this is winding down. You know, it's, it's, it's an opportunity to be all the more intentional with our friendships moving forward. And it is a new era for so many of us uh, when it comes to this franchise. You know, I mean, it's been almost 30 years, and for us, it's been almost eight years. And um, and for some of us, it's a you know, 
a new beginning. And so it's, it is a very meaningful, very powerful experience I think all of us will treasure and hold on to forever. And it is incredibly bittersweet that it's coming to a close because it has been so wonderful. So it's like the end of summer camp, you know? Yeah, it is a pr it's a profound privilege. It really is a profound privilege. And like every moment of life or, in, or it's passionate work, it's me, I'm always aspiring to really appreciate it when it happens, you know, yeah. But I gotta say, I mean, we've, you know, we've been shooting this movie, we've been making this movie, we've been like screening this movie in like, you know, studio spaces and like evaluating the cut of this movie. Now that we're here with a crowd in New York City who came here to watch this movie, this, this moment, this is what it's all about. Yeah, thank you. And also to everyone out watching, I just, you know, just to bring you in on this, this, we've been... We've been on, talking to people all over the world for, you know, what, six weeks now, longer than that, and we've been doing uh, so much uh, to communicate to others how we feel about this film, about the work that we did. But this is kind of, this is the last time we're doing that, you know, yeah. just right here, right now. Uh, and now we, we lay at your feet, we, we give it to the audience, and, uh, and it goes out into the world, and we hope you uh, have as much fun as we do, so thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Ladies and gentlemen, so I just want to let everybody know that it's going to take a, a, a few minutes in this theater to pull everything down and then the movie will start. But on that note, ladies and gentlemen, the cast and filmmakers behind Jurassic World Dominion. Colin, do you Thank want you. to tell them something? Oh, do yeah, you want no, to very tell important. Them? Yeah, very, yeah, very important. Very important. Um, look, I'm, I'm, from, I'm from Oakland, and, and in Oakland, when we watch movies, we get loud. Okay, so everybody uh, watching in IMAX, everybody here all over, yell things at the screen, you can laugh, you can cry, do all of it loudly, because we're here together in a theater watching a movie, which hasn't happened for a very long time. So let's enjoy it. But during my scenes, absolute silence. <laughs> yes, his scenes. Ab I don't want to hear a pin drop. <laughs> all right, no. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.